So today we've added a new feature to our GSD Tech Meet, and we're going to be live archiving this meeting. So um, we're recording, and we have a couple of people from the EdTech office who are going to be taking notes for us in a Google Doc HyperDoc, which somebody will send out into the uh, chat feature for you guys. Um, we don't want you to feel like you have to be taking notes while we're sharing with each other. Um, so this is a resource for you guys to refer to later. Um, and it will sort of give you guys the resources, link you out to tutorials um, for anything that comes up today. That way, and also if you have colleagues who aren't in our Google Meet today, you could share this with them. So our goals for today is uh, to share ideas with each other, to problem solve, to build solutions and match digital tools and strategies um, for distance learning. And it will be the same outline as last week. So we'll use 15 minutes for, um, for me to share some ideas. We're gonna highlight a teacher at the elementary level and a teacher at the secondary level. And then we'll have a discussion where you guys can share your ideas. Thanks, Chris, for reminding people to mute their mics. If there's any of you that need help doing that, if you hover down in the middle of your Google Meet screen, there's a button where you can click on the microphone and it will put a line through it and turn it red. So the norms for today, this is a collaborative space. We value hearing from our teachers uh, and coaches throughout the district. Um, and this is a positive space. We're all learning, we're having a growth mindset, um, and we're excited to have you. So today's focus um, comes from the feedback that we got last week when we had our first GSD tech meet. And that is um, focusing on ways to increase student participation in distance learning. Um, we got a lot of feedback from that last week, and so we wanted to use that for our conversation today. So um, sort of our framework and, and guidelines for the questions that I'm going to ask you guys later come from an article from Education, Education Week um, that's titled Ways to Increase Student Participation in Distance Learning. And it focuses on five principles for teachers to take into consideration. Um, which are listed up on your screen to help students form habits when they're uh, getting online for distance learning, to emphasize those connections and relationships between the students and their teacher and students and their peers, um, to celebrate student work and make it easy for students to respond online um, so that they feel successful. And then the last one is really my favorite, um, plan for flexibility. We need to expect and accept that this is really hard work um, for us as teachers and we need to give ourselves grace. Um, and then also for our students, so sort of planning to have that growth mindset and know that we need to be flexible in what we're doing. Um, so you'll notice that these ideas sort of are coming up um, throughout, the, throughout the questions today. Um, and really quickly, let's see if you guys can see. I just want to show you what our hyperdoc will look like. So there's no need for you to pull this up right now unless you're interested in kind of multitasking. But what it is is as we're talking and sharing, our department will be filling in notes and then there will be hyperlinks added so that you can click on those and then go out to resources at a later time. So let's get started. So one thing that we wanted to focus in on when we're talking about when we're talking about um, student engagement and participation is to recognize that our students have needs. Um, and I'm sure all of you are familiar with this. And something that's helped me as a teacher is recognizing that that green and purple area are things that unfortunately are out of our control as teachers, but that we can look at this blue and yellow area of making sure that we're purposefully um, embedding into our lessons and our instruction these um, opportunities to fill these needs for our students. So letting them connect together, feel like they're belonging, giving them opportunities where they feel um, like they're having success. 
So we're just going to start off highlighting um, two teachers in our district. Uh, the first one is a secondary teacher. Um, and one of her ideas is using Microsoft Teams to um, help students collaborate on projects or assignments. Um, this is a screenshot of what Teams look like, and we'll add some links into that archive hyperdoc um, if you want to investigate and learn more about Teams. But essentially, all um, class periods automatically a Google team or a Microsoft team is created. So the teacher will have all of their um, class periods will have a team and students will be added to that. And then teachers have the option of creating individual channels within that team. Um, and this could be used for to put groups of students into those channels. Um, to collaborate on a project so they can share messages back and forth. They can um, share documents in there and the teacher can come in and provide um, comments in there. So the teacher that we're highlighting is Aubrey Banks from Wasatch Junior. And some of the ideas that she shared with us, um, actually with her um, library media support, Davina, um, was that she's using to teach her history class, she's using Flipgrid to engage students. And they're sort of acting as news reporters and reporting on current events on the Flipgrid. Another thing that she's doing for research projects is that she is using Google Slides and Google Docs um, for the students to collaborate and create a presentation and share that with the class. And then they're having group conversations and a discussion on Canvas, which um, she suggested this to us and said that it's really working um, in increasing engagement in her online class. So here's a quick screenshot of um, what she's doing. So you'll see that on the left hand side, she's grouped five students to a subject. And they're using Google Slides to create a presentation. And then they're linking out their presentation onto a Google Doc, which is shared with the rest of the class. And, um, and then students are able to go into each other's Google Slides, read through the presentation, learn from each other, and then they're she's facilitating a conversation on Canvas um, for students to reply back and forth to each other of what they learned from their peers' uh, research project. So is Aubrey in here by any chance? If you are, you can unmute and share anything that I missed. I don't know if she was joining us today. Um, Davina, thanks so much. She just said that she's not here. Um, but if you have any additional questions about that, or you want to hear more about what she's doing, you could um, maybe reach out to her, or you could reach out to your STS or Elements at your school to get more ideas on how to use Google Apps for Education or Canvas to facilitate collaboration between your class, between your students. So a, the elementary teacher that we're going to highlight today is Allie Chai. She's a fourth grade teacher at Upland Terrace, um, which is the school that I'm at. And she, I've learned a lot from her through distance learning. And I asked her to um, come on. She'll unmute her mic. And I've asked her to share with us how she's motivating students to participate in distance learning. Um, she's had a lot of success with um, her engagement, about 90% of her students are logging on every day and completing assignments. Um, and she has some really specific um, habits and things that she's been doing that I think would be useful for you guys to, to hear from. So Allie, if you're here, can you unmute yourself? Hey, I'm here. Okay, take it away. All right. Can I share my screen? Yeah, absolutely. Let me unshare. Give me one second. I figure that might be easier. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to stop presenting. It's all yours. Okay, can you see that? Yeah. All right. So one of the things I do to get my students um, consistently logging on is I always start my mornings with a morning check-in. Um, on the check-in, I'll scroll down to yesterday's. 
I always leave a note. And I know that the kids are reading it because I'm making sure to shout out to all the kids who are doing things that either are required or going above and beyond. So I'm, I've kept up my classroom management system. Um, my kids are divided into the Hogwarts houses and they can earn house points. And we're still doing that online. And I think that's a big part of why my kids are going on and doing so much of the work. So I always make sure to shout out to who's doing a really good job. And I think that helps keep them motivated when they see their name on our morning uh, meeting. Then once they've read this, they complete a check-in each morning. And it's very consistent, but it's a great way for me to see how the kids are doing. So the first thing they'll do is they'll put their name. And then I like to ask how they're feeling. This is so that if they check I'm not great or I'm doing okay, I can reach out to their parents or to them, see if there's anything I can do to help. And then I have them on Mondays tell me what they did over the weekend. That way I get to connect with them and I can email them and talk more about what they did. And then finally, I have a question of the day. And this is really fun. I switch it up every day. But it's just something for the kids to talk about, and then I share their answers on our um, morning check-in for the next day. So today's question was, what makes you marvelous? And it's always fun to see what they think um, is marvelous about them. I really like how you change it up each day. I didn't realize that originally when I was looking at your check-ins. But I, I, one thing I really appreciate about it is how you're um, sort of like, there's mul you're killing more like multiple birds with one stone, right? Like there's one check-in, but you're checking on how they're doing emotionally. You're making sure that they're getting online, like to motivate them with those messages and you're giving them that to-do list. So I love how in one, one assignment in Google Classroom, but you could put this on Canvas too, it would really work for any age of students or even with teachers. Um, Definitely. It's a great way just to see how they're doing and where they're mentally. And yeah. then the final thing I have, like Casey said, was a checklist. So this just lets me know, um, or it lets the students know what I expect from them today. So they need to open up their calendar, which is on Google Classroom. I'm very consistent. I keep the same type of activities every day, so there's no questions for the students. They look at the schedule, complete their priority activities, try the challenge activities and always do their best work. The only thing that's different about this list on Tuesday through Friday is before open the calendar, I do want them to go back and look at their work from the previous day and fix anything. And I have about 20 out of 27 students who do that every day. So I think that really helps because they're reading the expectation every day. So you've sort of built in, I guess that goes back to like one of those habits. It's like, they know, they get the reminder on your to-do list, but they also have this habit built that they're going to look at their work from the day before, checking in on any feedback that you gave them. Yep, and they really do a good job. They always go back and check their work before they even start their work from today. And I think this helps remind them of that. I really like that. Thanks for, for sharing. Is there anything else um, that I might not have hit on that you wanted to share with us? Um. I think the only other thing I would share is with my calendar each week, I really try to make it as consistent as possible. I feel like if you switch up the activities too much on the kids, they have a hard time. So I put my activities in matter of importance. So first they do their check-in, then they go to math, and it's the same routine every day. They complete I ready, they do their daily math review, then their math lesson. And so they know every single day to expect those things. And then I do the same in reading and writing. So I think consistency is key for the kids. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Hey, um, does anybody have any questions for Allie while she's unmuted and sharing her screen? I do. Um, can she scroll back down on that check-in? And so I can take a peek at exactly what she's got on that. Um, that's at the bottom, but go to the top when you do your check-in. Um, oh. I just want to know everything you're doing with that. Do you okay. know what I'm saying? So let's see. Again. And maybe, maybe a good idea. I think this is a perfect use of our, um, 
of our archive is I can get with Allie after this meeting and maybe if she's comfortable, we can share a couple of her examples and make them like a force, like a force copy or we can screenshot some of her like favorite ones. Um, would that be helpful? Is that sort of what you're looking for? Well, I'm just looking at your format because <laughs> okay, I have yeah. not done this with my students. And so I'm just looking at your format. So let's see. Is that the top of your screen? Yeah. So the first thing okay. they do is they'll put in their name. Okay. And then the next section is the how are you feeling? Oh, I like that. I really like that a lot. Yeah. And they're really honest. They'll tell me if they're not doing great or they're having a bad day. And then I can reach out to them. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. So I'm going to, if you have any additional questions, I hate to cut you off because I think that these are. No, you're fine. Super You're valuable fine. conversation, right? If you have any additional questions, though, definitely put it into the comment area because I'm sure that there are other teachers um, who are in this meet right now. There's 93 of us. I'm sure a lot of us have those same uh, questions. And then we'll make sure on the tech side of things, we'll make sure to reach out to Allie, have her answer those questions, and then we'll put them into our HyperDoc, which will then get um, sent out so that you guys have more uh, answers and resources to kind of build on this Google form check-in idea. I really like it. Um, Allie, okay. thank you so much for sharing with us. Yeah, no problem. Okay, I'm gonna move us along and let me just get back in here and take over the screen again. Let's see, my window, here we go. All right. Okay, so, answering procedures. So um, the way we're gonna do this, if you weren't here last week, is in the chat area. So if you click on that chat icon, um, we have about five questions to go through and they're labeled question one, Q1, Q2, Q, you know, everything. And then you're gonna answer A1, put in your answer. That way we can kind of track the conversation. So my first question for you guys is how can we help students form habits when it comes to distance learning? Allie has talked about some of her habits that she's been building with her class. Um, what are some strategies that you've used and what's worked? Um, your mute, Mike is not muted. Try to mute that and then we'll see if it's popping up in the comments. I like what Lisa is saying that she's using Class Dojo to send specific feedback to students. Um, and so that seems like a habit that parents or students are getting in the habit of looking at, at the same location for that feedback. Lynn Tyner is sharing a similar idea from what um, Allie was saying is that she's trying to keep her schedule the same each week and just putting new lessons in it. So that outline, that calendar looks the same, but just adding new activities. A lot of people are talking about keeping the formatting the same. So meaning it looks consistent for students each time that they log in. Does anybody want to unmute and share what that looks like in their class or in their Google Classroom or in their Canvas? Um, I'm willing to share mine if you want to see what it looks like. Yes, please. Okay. <clears throat> so do you want me to share it? Why don't, um, can you describe it or do you want to? It, like, look, it looks a lot thinking? like Allie's except I use the topics as dates. So each day has its own assignment and one through nine is the same. So math is always number five, reading is number two. And I tell my students like Allie, these are must do's. All the, like all the videos and things that are required for those lessons are under that so that students, because I have second graders, so that they can just click on the video, see it. And I even record the directions for those students who cannot read still or English is a struggle for them as we go over mm -hmm. the target. I really like that, Valerie. And I was thinking about that and we'll throw some of those 
the different ways that you can format or structure a Google Classroom or Canvas, whether you're going to organize it by date or by subject, um, I think you bring up a really good point there. Thank I you for sharing. Too. Yeah, please. Um, I work with students with disability and a lot of English language learners. So mm -hmm. I try to cut through the noise and make sure the top of my stream every day is the key instructions where I also post a little bit of a read aloud so they can hear the instructions while the instructions read aloud. And that way they don't have to dig down in the stream to see what the day has on it. Even if I post something afterwards, I make sure the top of the stream, the top thing on Google Classroom is that that key information. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Taylor. Um, we'll put a link for anybody who doesn't know how to move information in Google Classroom up to the top. Um, we'll have a little tutorial in our um, HyperDoc on how to do that. But I think that you're right. Another thing that that's hitting on is, are we making our um, platforms really user friendly for our students and our families? And I think that we have the ability to, like you're saying, sort of alter what it looks like um, for students. We have some awesome answers. I'm gonna move us to the next question just because we're a little bit behind. Um, but make sure that when you when we send out all of this that you guys take the time to read through or see anything interesting from your peers. Um, so how can we incorporate student choice into our digital lesson? So this is question number two. Um, we know that choice is a really important factor in engaging students in learning. Um, so how are you giving your students choice? Keith, I like what you're saying going back to question one, just about turning off our notifications in the stream because sometimes there's just too much happening that it becomes distracting. Thank you for that idea. So I see some people talking about using a choice board or a choice menu for students. Um, a must do or may, may do board. Does anybody want to unmute? Oh, it seems like a lot of choice is happening with must do, may do, where kids can choose what assignments they're working on. Um, is there anybody who wants to unmute and explain to us what that looks like in their in their classroom for their students? I would like to share. Yes, please. I teach um, second grade dual immersion Spanish. And in the schedule that I keep very consistent, I just change, you know, the, the lesson and the options they have for the lesson. I type next to the link, must do, may do. That's how I do it. That way the students and the parents know which things they need to prioritize. Yes. And um, at the beginning, when I started my meetings, were only a few students. Now I can have of my 29, an average of 25, 27, somewhere there, 26 every day. And the meetings from taking an hour now, they can run for 25 to 30 minutes because they learned the routine already. Right. I really like that. Thank you for sharing. Um, Melanie just mentioned something. She says, some students prefer a paper pencil for their daily writing, some completed on the Google Slides. Um, a question that I have later on that will come up is, what are some ways that you're doing non-digital activities and providing that for students or asking them to do that? Melanie, do you want to unmute and share or maybe anybody else that has some non-digital ideas? I can also share over there. Yeah, please. Um, since I teach Spanish, the materials, we don't have them electronically. So I have to do the, the things you already know. I, I snip the page and then put it in downloads and up, upload that to a Google slide that has been modified a little bit as a background. And then mm -hmm. I insert boxes and they can use that electronically or the school also in school, we prepare packets and they turn them in. Those are the two ways I've been using. Perfect. Thank you, Yolanda. Um, yeah, I have seen a lot of teachers uh, or students 
writing their answers and then uploading that so that teachers can see it. I think that's a great, um, a great option. We're going to move on to question number three. How can we structure our lessons? Actually, you know what? I'm going to skip this one because I feel like we've talked about it a little bit. How do we structure our lessons and online platforms um, to be successful? Um, let's move to question five. How can we celebrate student accomplishments and or work during distance learning? How have you been doing that in your classroom? Taylor, I agree that the morning post and having feedback and celebrations is a good idea. Ooh, Katie Williams, I like the idea of an ongoing Google slideshow where students can submit their artwork. Um, Allie Chai was doing something similar where when students submitted artwork to her for fun, because kids are still drawing for us teachers, which is awesome. She'll highlight that in her feed on Google Classroom and send it out to publicly share it for students. What happened before 1750? Um, Sharon, would you mind or anybody else want to talk about, a few of you are saying how you're giving feedback of those celebrations, so you're sending messages. Either Sharon or anybody else want to unmute and share what that looks like in your classroom, what platform you're using, how often are you doing that? If I could say something again, um, I have my children, one of their they, choices is there's an art project every day and their response is a flip grid. They're all allowed to see it and respond to it as well as their daily check-ins. I also respond by class dojo re response, email. My kids and I will email back and forth. And so I try to find as many ways as possible. And if I need to, like um, your teacher said earlier, if I'm concerned about a student, I will call home mm -hmm. through the yeah. Skype. Those I are like, Sorry, I keep cutting you off. I apologize. I, re I like what you're saying because what I'm taking away from that is you're like, I'm going to use as many options as I can. Whichever way the student is responding, I'm going to try that. And obviously, we have to um prioritize like our teacher ability to handle like we can't over extend ourselves but like you said if they're responding on dojo there might be a handful of parents that you're using dojo for there might be a handful that we're calling home for um or you know putting positive messages out on google classroom or canvas um so we're right at 11 30. um I'm happy to keep going. I have about, we have like two more questions, but also I don't want to um, hold you guys up on time. So feel free if, if 1130 is your time limit. Um, my feelings will not be hurt if you leave. So we're going to move on to question number six, which might be a little bit of a sticky one, but how can we take the components of student learning that's working for us right now back into our traditional classroom when the time comes what are the things that have worked for you that you really enjoyed that um that you hope to prioritize when we get back to a, a typical learning situation when we're in the building would you like to hear a joke courtney i agree i love the personalization that we're able to give. Um, and I think that's a lot of our focus with blended learning when we're using technology in general is how can we use technology to, to really meet the needs of all of our students um, and be efficient with our time in doing that. Flipgrid and Nearpod when we go back into the classroom and still planning on checking in with students. And as always, our teachers are always meeting our students' needs. And so it's it's great to just be able to hear what you guys are doing. 
All right, let's. We already talked about question seven of our non-digital examples. Um, so our last part is feedback. It was really helpful last week um, for the people that filled out our feedback form to kind of give us guidance for what you'd like to see next week. Um, so somebody on my team is going to put this link into the chat um, and then you can click on that and it's just a Google form. There's about four questions. Um, and then we will see you guys next week. Um, also, I'm going to stay on here. So if anybody has more stuff they want to share or they want to unmute, please feel free to or if you have questions to ask each other. Thank you, Jenny, for putting that feedback form in there. You'll just click on that blue link and then it will bring you to the form. You're welcome, Melanie. I, I don't know if Allie is still there. Yeah, is she yeah. still there? <laughs> um, I don't know, but what's your question? Maybe I can help. Well, I just, I really like that um, morning I'm thing that you do. I've not been doing that. And I would just like to maybe email her or something so that I can You're get happy. a little bit more, you know, get a little bit more information on how to incorporate that. I really like that, you know, that, that positive start to a day. So... Yeah, and it seems like Allie still is on the message, and I think she just said um, that you can feel free to email her. So, Allie, if, if you're comfortable, you want to put your email into the chat for us? Yep, I'm just going to do that right now. Awesome. Thank you. I wanted to say... Or sorry, go ahead. I wanted to say thank you. I think I would like to try that next year for my students, but I, right now I feel comfortable, you know, just a phone call. The parents feel so welcome, and, you know, they're up they appreciate every single call that I make. It only takes like five minutes to 10 minutes just to check on the student and the families. I realized that uh, most of my families don't know how to use computers. So this has been a relief uh, for them to hear just the voice of the teacher and knowing that we care. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that because I think that that sort of balances the conversation and I did not bring that up, but I think that using your teacher, you know your students, you know your families, and you need to make that decision of what's best for them. And so like you're saying, right now a phone call is the best thing for your kids. And I would, I mean, I compliment you for, for doing what works for your class, but then also everybody else. I think sometimes teachers put a lot of pressure on themselves, feeling like, oh, well, I should be doing this and this. And at the end of the day, like, I'm excited that we're all trying to improve and try new things, but I think also give ourselves a break that we're working really hard and um, do what's working for you and then kind of add on those little pieces um, as it feels right. Yeah, it's kind of cool. <laughs> all right, my friends, anybody else want to share? I love chatting, so I can I can talk all day. Much. This was. This was. Um, this is my first time, and it was very helpful. No, I really appreciate you that. that. <laughs> All right. So we can. Can I go. ask a question? Yeah. Go ahead, Linda. Okay. So I assigned. I I bought um, from Teachers Pay Teachers like a Google slide sheet that they could do, mm -hmm. and so I think. And I'm and. And I'm just learning all this technology. So that was, I was super excited about it. I shared it with my students and shared, made a copy for them. And then they were having a hard time. Like, like the first day we were okay. And then the next day they went into Google Drive. So is it that they go into Google Slides, back into Slides, and they can edit? Because they kept saying, oh, send me, I need to be able to edit it. I can't get in anymore. And so I was like stuck. And then the kids were trying to figure it out and, I think that's what we came up with, but I'm not positive. I don't know how that all works. No, I think that's a question that a lot of teachers have with like the share settings in um, different Google files that you might be sending out to students. And, and that can be kind of tricky to navigate. Um, we'll definitely, the first thing I'm going to say is we'll definitely put some like tutorials of how to change your share settings. But my second question would be, are you sharing this through Google Classroom with your students? Yes. Okay. And when um, one feature that you'll see is 
when you click the create button and then you cr you're creating a new assignment um, and then you're going to add that slideshow, there's right. an option over to the right, a little drop down menu that says um, create a copy for each student. And I did that. And then they still had problems with it. Yeah, but I think in my in my instructions, so that so the first day everyone I didn't have any everything seemed fine. And I was like, oh, I'm good. And then the next day, that's when I got all these problems. And I and I think because of my instructions, I said go into Google Docs, which it wasn't Google Docs. I should have said Google, go into slides. Mm -hmm. Is that my mistake? So I think that I possibly Linda, it's kind of hard. I feel like we'll be able to troubleshoot that probably possibly a little bit easier if we can see each other's screen. So I'm happy to help you after this meeting or um, you can reach out to your STS if uh, if that's, if you wanna solve it right now, you and I can fix it or you can reach out to your STS and they might be able to put it together quickly just by looking at it on the student end. Okay, maybe I'd rather have you help me if that's a possibility. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we're on this we're on this meeting, so I'll finish up chatting with everybody else and then if you wanna stay, we can kind of okay. look at it. Um, does anybody else? Yeah, absolutely. Does anybody else have Can I interject for a second? Yes. So one thing, Linda, is if the students press that turn in button, they no longer have rights to edit it until you return it to them. So that may be part of the problem, too, is that they hit that turn in button on your Google Classroom okay. and you need to return it back to them so they can edit it. I don't know. How do you return it back? So if you open the assignment in your Google Classroom, uh -huh. um, that over on the right side where you would normally put in their scores when you're looking at their files, it has a checkbox to be able to click on to return all. And if you check mark that, then you, then hit return. It returns everybody's files back to them so they can edit it again. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait. I'm going. Okay, so you click on. I, I wonder if I can share an example on here. Hey, so you can go to any of my math ones. Okay, so go to grades. And then if I click, Sarah, walk me through this. Oh, so I can go. Okay. It, um, the way that I've done it before is actually under classwork. Okay, I'm in classwork. And then if you click on whichever assignment it is, so she said to go under the math ones. Okay. And like actually open, like view the assignment so you see the student screen yeah. over there on the left side where it has the assigned and graded and whatever. If you have students who've turned in a file, but it has not been graded or whatever, where it has those check boxes for assigned and graded, one of them will say return. So you can check mark that and return all of those to your students. And so right now this isn't working because her students haven't completed this, but if you click on them, this button up at the top will let you return it back. Okay. Yeah. Cause I think that's what's happening. Cause then I had some kids like last week we were doing better. And then, and then I, again, it started on Monday and I think it's those kids that are turning it in. I, that's exactly. And I see right now, I, I think that's exactly what it is. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Sarah, thank you so much for chiming in. Cause I was missing yeah. that part. Casey, can I say something too? Yes. This is kind of a weird thing I do. I don't have my kids turn it in until they're on their second draft of it. That way there's not the confusion. So until I give them feedback on it, I don't have them turn it in. That way when they turn it in, I know that they've made the corrections I want them to make. Okay, that's just, helpful too. I mean, that's just a thought. Well, and that's a good point. Like as we move forward and we're thinking about into next year using Google Classroom, building that procedure at the beginning of the year of like, how do I just operate? How do we want our students to operate inside of Google Classroom or inside of Canvas? Um, that might solve those problems for us before they become an issue. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. And that was a great question, um, Linda. If you need additional help, let us, you know, either reach out to me or you can reach out to your SPS. Um, does anybody else have questions? Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, make sure you leave us feedback for how we can improve this and um, have a good rest of your week.
Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. I'm going to X out of this so it's going to kick us all out. <laughs>